chemistry powers today, but courageous chemistry is shaping our tomorrow. It's fueling the hydrogen economy and driving clean energy. It's in our semiconductors and even powers our 5G. It makes bridges stronger and medical equipment safer. Chemistry powers progress and binds us all together. But there's something more that sets us apart. Courageous chemistry. Hello, it's nice to have you back. In today's lesson, we'll look at a very important topic in chemistry and it's termed mass and volume relationship or what we know as what? Stoichiometry. And don't get carried away when we talk of stoichiometry. As you can see, we're talking about determining the quantity of substances in chemical what? reaction. But briefly, we'll look at introduction to mole, we'll look at conversion, we'll look at mole theory, we'll look at molar mass, and then we'll look at stoichiometry. Introduction to moles. Now, of course, you're already aware that when you're writing equation from lower level, okay, as we are saying, there you see magnesium plus oxygen to give us what? Magnesium oxide. Normally, what do you say? First of all, our equation is not balanced, but when we balance the equation by, you know, putting the two in front of the magnesium and then on the left hand side and two in front of the magnesium on the right hand side, our equation is balanced. What do you say? You say two moles of magnesium combined with one mole of what oxygen to produce two moles of magnesium oxide, is it not? Yes. When you talk about the word mole, what do you understand by the concept of the word mole? First of all, chemistry use the word mole to measure the quantity of substances in reaction all right just like if you say one dozen of egg you mean 12 quid of egg okay yes we use the mole to represent a unit as well and it is equivalent to a number known as or a constant known as avogadro's constant one mole of any substance contains 6.022 times 6 power 23 atoms or particles or molecules as the case was maybe now, you need to understand this concept very well because it forms the foundation of everything you are going to be doing. When I say one mole of a substance containing the Avogadro's number, then we can relate it like this by saying number of any particle is equal to number of mole times Avogadro's number. So, if I have one mole of oxygen, it will be one mole times Avogadro's number. If I have two moles of oxygen, it will be two moles times Avogadro's number. On the other hand, we can now look for the number of mole by dividing the number of particles with Avogadro's number. You get it now? So if I have, let me say I have, okay, for example, I have six mole of a substance. So it will be six mole of any substance in terms of number of particles is going to be six times the Avogadro's number, okay? That gives me the current value you are seeing there. On the other hand, if I have the number of particles now, okay? I have the number of particles to be 11 exponential 23. That means I'm going to divide by number of particles by Avogadro's number to give me the current value of moles. Can you see that now? Yes, understand this concept first, okay? Now, where does this mole come from, okay? The mole is like, is a unit used by chemists, okay? To represent the amount of any substance that contain the same number of what? atom or molecules or particles as they are in 12 gram of carbon 12 now calm down when we say 12 gram of carbon 12 we mean the isotope what carbon 12 do you get it now 12 gram of carbon isotope carbon 12 we as we give us the exact number which is what we call the avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 so what 23 why because carbon 12 which has a very high Percentage abundance is used as a what? Standard. So the exact measurement of one mole of 12 gram of carbon 12 gave us 6.022 times 6 power 23. So we say one mole or the amount of any substance that contains the same number of atom or molecules or particles as they are in 12 gram of what? Carbon 12. Meaning that the number of one mole of any substance is equivalent to the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 and recall that the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12 is exactly 6.022 times 12 power 23 all right so basically i can say that pure gold one mole of pure gold contains 6.022 times 12 power what 
23 watt atoms do you get it which is equivalent to what 12 grams of what carbon same thing for one mole of pure water take note i did not say one gram of gold i said one mole of what gold when i talk of one gram of gold it is in a different ball game entirely i'll come to that shortly so one mole of water is equivalent to 12 gram of carbon 12 which is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 power what 23 why carbon 12 is used as a what standard again you can trace it down or the reason down to its percentage abundance of its uh, isotope. The scientist known as Lorenzo Romano Amedo Carlo Avogadro is the guy that discovered what? Or the scientist that discovered uh, this number, okay? Hence, it is ascribed to him as what? Avogadro's what? Number. Now, take note from this discussion, we have established that one mole of any substance contains 6.022 times 2 power what? 23. It could be atom, particles, molecules, because these are the what terms familiar with what? Chemistry, all the things that chemists work with. Do you get it now? Yes. Now, let's establish this fact. One mole of carbon-12 isotope is actually equivalent to 12 grams of what? Carbon-12, which is actually equal to Avogadro's number that is 6.022 times 12 power what? 23. Is it not? So, one mole of gold, one mole of silver, one mole of copper are all equivalent to what? 12 gram of carbon 12, which of course is equal to Avogadro's number, but they are not the same thing as 12 grams of gold and silver and copper. You get it now? Their masses are always what? Different because the atomic number are what? Different or their mass number are what? Different. I remember that the atomic mass of uh, elements in the periodic table are in the unit, atomic mass unit. It actually tells us the uh, amount of one mole of what? The element, okay? In what? Gram. So one mole of hydrogen is actually 1.0 gram, okay? That means 1.0 gram of hydrogen is equivalent to what? 6.02 times 6 power 20. Three atoms. Similarly, one mole of oxygen is 16 grams, you know, and 16 grams of oxygen is equivalent to that one. But remember that hydrogen and oxygen are what the atomic molecule that is, you have two atoms of them bonded together, you know. Therefore, we multiply our mass by what? Two. Do you get it now? We multiply our mass by what? Two. And that gives us what we call the what? The molar mass. What do I call it? The molar mass. What did I call it? Molar mass. So when we do this kind of calculation, we no longer say we have the what? Atomic weight or atomic mass. Rather, we say we have, we have the what? The molar mass. So, how do we express the molar mass? We express the molar mass in what? Gram per mole. What did I say? Gram per mole. Meaning that in one mole of hydrogen gas, you have actually two atoms of hydrogen bonding. Therefore, you have two atoms times the what? Atomic mass divided by what? One mole. So we express it in what? Gram per mole. Similarly, if we do for water, we have two times the hydrogen plus the oxygen atom to give us what? 18 gram. And then we express it as what? 18 grams in one mole, which is what? 18 gram per mole. I hope you understand this. Okay. Two concepts you get to understand here is the molecular weight and the what? Molar mass. The molecular weight, of course, is the combined atomic masses of what all the elements in what the molecule is it not yes it is actually equal to the mass in gram of one mole of that molecule so basically what we are saying is the atomic what weight is equivalent to what the molar mass okay which is of course is one mole of what the particular what molecule and of course it's expressing what gram per mole as you can see there since we can determine the mole ratio from a chemical reaction we can use this to determine the amount of substance being formed or being used up in a chemical reaction and this form the base of what stoichiometry of course which we, are, we use to determine what the quantity of a reactant or product in a reaction so for this equation, we have two hydrogen combining with one mole of what? Oxygen to form two moles of what? Uh, water. Is it not? 
Now, from this information, we can determine or we can write it as more ratio than 2, two ratio 1, ratio 2. Meaning that we can calculate from one mole of water. I get it now. So, this mole ratio now for water, we can say one mole of hydrogen combined with half watt mole of water oxygen to form one watt mole of what water. Let's look at another example now that goes into a deep calculation. We have nitrogen coming with what hydrogen to form what ammonia what is known as what the ABA process which of course is used for making a, a fertilizer is it not yes now nitrogen hydrogen to give us what ammonia our equation is not what balance is it balance no to balance this we first of all put two in front of the word ammonia and then we check properly ammonia hydrogen it's not balanced, but nitrogen is balanced. So to balance the hydrogen, what do we do? We can't. Two times three, so that gives us a six. So put three in front of the word hydrogen. Now, question is balanced. The next thing to do now is to write the word mole ratio. Okay? From here, we discover that one mole of what? Nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to give us two moles of what? Ammonia. Is it not? Yes. You see it now. Can I calculate for 10 moles of what? Nitrogen by simple mathematics, is it not? If uh, one mole is combining with what? Three mole. What would 10 mole combine with? Simply do your math. You get it now. If you combine with what? 30 H2, okay? To make 20 NH what? 3. Do you understand? Yes. Let's try out another simple question using this equation. How many moles do you need to make 10 moles of what? Ammonia. From our reaction, we already know that uh, 1 mole of nitrogen gave what? 2 moles of what? Ammonia. So we'll write it like this. Since we know 10 moles of ammonia, we'll put it down. And then we put the moles of ammonia from the reaction under. That is 2 moles under. So that units can do what? Cancel out. Then we put 1 mole up because it's 1 mole of nitrogen that is combining. Is it not? With the 2 moles of what? ammonia and then you do your math okay 10 divided by 2 times 1 or 10 times 1 divided by what 2 that should give us about 10 uh, 5 moles okay so it simply implies that 10 moles of ammonia will react with what exactly 5 moles of what nitrogen or 10 moles of ammonia will be produced by 5 moles of what nitrogen next question how many moles of ammonia can you make from 0.37 moles of hydrogen? This time we are looking at 0.37 moles of what? Hydrogen. So you put the ratio of what? Ammonia to what? Hydrogen. Is it not? Yes. So this cancel out. Then, of course, you put the value of what? Ammonia up. And then you do your math. 0.37 times 2 divided by 3. Or 2 divided by 3 times 0.37. That should give us about, what should be your value now? Our answer is what? 0.25 moles of what? Ammonia. Now, these values can, other than moles, can then be converted into grams. You get it now. Remember that number of moles or amount of a substance is mass over the what? Molar mass of the what? Substance. That number goes at the end of the lesson. Remember to do other activities in this class. I'll see you soon. Stay safe.